everywhere, everywhere we go. Uh, Lou Gehrig, and I'm, I've used this illustration before, but he was at bat, and he was a uh, announcer was you know announcing the uh, baseball game, and um, he was just standing there, and the pitcher throws the ball, and Lou Gehrig doesn't move, and the umpire calls strike, and Lou Gehrig turns around, looks at the uh, umpire, and says something. And the announcer's like, Lou Gehrig is saying something to the umpire. Lou Gehrig never does that. What did he say to the umpire? And so after the game, the announcer goes to Lou Gehrig, you know, and says, Lou Gehrig, you know, you never do that. What did you say to that, um, that umpire when you turn around after you had that strike? He said, I wish I had that one back. And you wish you had that one back. There's moments in our lives we wish we had that back. We had them back, but they're gone forever once they take place. When uh, I wrecked our van back in 16, um, I was preaching in jail service, and I said, I wish there was a reverse button I could push to go back and not wreck that van. But it can't. It happened. It took place. You know, regrets. We shouldn't have regrets because regrets make us fret. Make us worry. Well, I could have done that better. Our time is in front of us now. And you know, the accident I had when I wrecked my truck, I wish I could, didn't do that, but it led to my salvation. It led to me seeking out God. That, that, that's part of my testimony. You know, I was thinking the other day, if I wouldn't have done that and got saved, you know, uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was in God's plan for that to need me. It wasn't God's plan for me to wreck my truck. I know that. Get out there and get drunk and black out and hit the light pole, but it was God's plan. God used that to save me. And here I am today. And I want to make the most of my time. I want to use it. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to me how I use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute. But eternity is in it. It's one minute. It can make a difference. And eternity is in it. A survey asks people, what do you have to live for? Which 94% answered, they were just enduring today and living for tomorrow. That's living unwisely. Too many people uh, uh, miss today because they're worrying about tomorrow. Worry doesn't make us ready, but unready to redeem the time. Adrian Rogers says, We face the future out of breath because we've been fighting tomorrow's battles today. So we must make the best of today. We must, today is the day. Amen. We must make that opportunity in our lives, every opportunity that we need uh, to take a hold of. In a letter, John Wesley wrote to his wife, Redeem the time. Catch the golden moments as they fly. Again, we raise our children and boom, they're growing up. They're out. They're married. And we have grandchildren, which I don't have grandchildren yet. But one day, Lord willing, the rapture don't take place, which uh, I'm looking for the rapture. I'm looking for the Lord to come back. But if he doesn't come back, um, there's, the time is still whirling on. At that time, uh, the opportunities that we have, uh, we need to make the best of every opportunity. The word time is better translated opportunity here and refers to a fixed and definite period of time during which something can be accomplished that cannot be com- accomplished after the time has passed. The idea is not clock time, but what is um, written for us as kingdom opportunities. It's, it's uh, taking the advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. So what are we going to do with our next opportunity to do something to help somebody? To uh, reach out again for the loss. To reach out to people that um, need Jesus and to help our fellow Christians. And, um, we know there's needs that we have. Sometimes there's sick, sickness and uh, people need help and we're apt to do what we need to do to help. Um, you know, um, we help people to uh, 
grow in Jesus. There's people, our young people, that you see that need encouragement. Take the best of the opportunity to encourage them. Um, reaching out to somebody. I remember when uh, we uh, Lance's um, mother was in the hospital. Um, she was about to die. She was on the ventilator. And um, I went up there to see um, her to visit and uh, you know just uh, go up there to be there for the family. And um, Lance was there. And then Caitlin. Caitlin, uh, you remember Lance's sister. I mean, you know, Lance, she comes here. But the reason she came is because she saw that I was there for Lance. And then I worked with Robin, her mother, and I went there to the hospital. And that touched her. That moved her, and she came to church. And not saying you know I had anything to do with it, but God did. But she came and got saved and got the Holy Ghost. And uh, she's been you know coming. You know she left, but she's coming back because she knows that she feels God here. She knows she feels the presence of the Lord when she comes. And uh, so that word opportunity is derived from the Latin ob. Port- I'm not a Greek or Latin scholar here, but ob portu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In ancient times, before modern harbor ships had to uh, wait for the the tide, the, the turning of the tide, the timing of the tide before the um, boat could make it safely to port. Uh, this Oporto described the ship waiting for port, ready to seize that crucial moment when it could ride the tide into the safe harbor. The captain knew if he missed that passing tide, the ship would have to wait for another tide to come in. So God gives us in that opportunity that we must be spiritually wise to see and seize them. You've heard that saying, window of opportunity. We've got a lot of windows of opportunity. You know, Sister Barbara, growing up, uh, and, and you saw what the Lord was doing in your life. You, you saw those windows of opportunity you had to go, you had to jump into and let God let the Holy Ghost direct you and lead you and guide you. And that's what we do. We see those windows of opportunity to help people along the way, to reach out to people, to, to encourage our brothers and sisters in the Lord and services. We have time when God's moving. You know, we obey the Lord and, 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 and you may be the key to the service and you jump in and say, God, you know, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And if God deals with you to do something. God deals you to go pray for a brother or a sister. And then boom, I mean, the Holy Ghost starts moving. You've got the key to the service and people step out and they wade into the water. But what if you didn't obey God at that time? And, 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 and the service just kind of dwindled down and just went like a normal service. We must obey God and, and, and the opportunities that come when the Holy Ghost is moving. You never know you know, again, what's going, going to take place. And I'm uh, not saying that when we just have preaching in our services and nobody steps out, I'm not saying it's not God's will, but we come to the service expecting God's will to be accomplished, to be strengthened, to be encouraged, to be, um, uh, 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 I guess, in waiting for the tide of the Holy Ghost to move. Uh, you remember our March meeting um, um, when our building wasn't even finished yet. We had a powerful service that I believe was Saturday morning, if I'm not mistaken, and the Holy Ghost uh, started moving on this side. And it's just like, and Brother Richard and, and someone else said that it felt like they saw God, you know, the people were responding to the Holy Ghost moving this way, and then He moved on this side. And it's just like a tide, God moved, you know, not saying that we can control the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost Himself came down and moved among the people, and it felt like God moved in a mighty way in that service. And we look back and we remember those services, but we still can have powerful services. We can still have those services. Where God can move. We let Him have His way. Look for the opportunities. The windows of opportunities will only come one time. One time. And that's it. So we need to seize the opportunities that God gives us. Harry Ironsides exhorts to us to be um, alert for witnessing to the loss as bargain hunters uh, are to purchase goods to advantage. We talked about that earlier. And uh, he said that... Uh, we're to uh, look for those opportunities. And often we neglect those circumstances which are put in our path. We may say a word for our Lord and endeavor to point the lost to Him. Our intentions are good, but we become so occupied with other matters, many of them trifling in the extreme 
And before we realize that that person to whom we should have spoken to is beyond our reach. You're talking about missed opportunities. We're talking about redeeming the time, Brother Tracy. And um, I was at Walmart one time, and there's a man that lived here in Sterlington. I don't know if he's alive anymore, but I saw him at Walmart, and um, we had talked about church before. And I gave him a couple tracts, and I said, hey, give this to somebody. You know, just pass it on to somebody. And I didn't think nothing about it else. But I'm in Walmart walking around, you know, and, and I see a man over here and on this side of the store. And I went to witness to him, but I couldn't get to him. He was... And he was gone. Well, I come over here and I'm checking out over here on this side of the store. And I see him again. And I reach into my pocket, grab the track. Did you get one of these, sir? He goes, yes, I did. I go, you did? He goes, yeah. I go, he pulled out his pocket. You know, the man over there was in uh, front of the store gave me one. He did. He, he did. Well, I didn't expect him to do that, but he did. He gave it and he passed it on. And here I am and it just blows my mind. That God gave him, uh, that, that man gave him that track. So somebody I wanted to witness to had already been witnessed to. <laughs> you know, he got the track. But uh, other times, there's times where like, I want to reach out to somebody, but they're gone. I can't, they're too far away for me to get to. I can't chase them down and make it look like I'm, I'm running after them and tracking them down. You know, they're kind of odd, but sometimes, you know, I feel like the Holy Ghost pricks my heart that I'm going to do it and I'm going to. Um, reach out to him because that opportunity is gone if I don't do it. <laughs> Missed opportunities. Adoniram Judson said, a life once spent is irrevocable. It will um, remain to be comp- com- contempl- to- contemplated through eternity. The same may be said of each day. When it's once passed, it is gone forever. All the marks which we put upon it will be uh, exhibited forever. Each day will not only be a witness of our conduct, but will affect our everlasting destiny. How shall, shall we then wish to see each day marked with usefulness? It is uh, today um, to mind that the days are past the future is in our power. Let us therefore each morning resolve to save the day and in, 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 into eternity in which uh, the garb we wish to wear forever and it might let us reflect at night at night reflect one more day is irrevocably gone amen gone forever and let it be forever marked so redeeming the time for the days are evil the days are short time is um really not on our side. I think the Rolling Stones had a song, The Time is on Our Side. Well, uh, the world thinks that time, you know, that you've got to uh, uh, party it up. Uh, what's that saying? Uh, uh, eat and drink for tomorrow we die. And then eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow we die. And then the judgment. Well, uh, we're to, you know, to take every opportunity we have but to uh, not live it up like it's 1999. Uh, Prince had a song uh, that they, uh, I guess, were forecasting the year 2000 to be that day of the Y2K thing you know, happened, and, uh, and everybody wants to party like it's 1999. And that's all people have on their mind. That's what I wanted. I wanted to party and live it up and have a good time. Uh, but um, those things like that, pride goes before destruction. And that's the pride of man. You know, to party it up, to live for the moment, to not seize the day like in a spiritual sense, but to live for that moment right there and then and do whatever you know is pleasing to the flesh. Well, we desire to please the Spirit, to do what God wants us to do. Brother Scott, I think Bill Shazer's feast is a great parallel to our day. The handwriting is on the wall for those that are discerning. Spiritual, the handwriting was on the wall, and the party was going on. You know, and that's you know everybody's living like it's happy hour. But but God has has given America clear warning over and over and over again. And like you said, I don't think that time necessarily is on our side. I believe that time is short. Right now, God's timetable is always different than ours. Just by the, the, the way the world is, uh, 
I've always said this one thing, man left to himself.